Touch them up now. Good luck to both of you. Tokolos, one of our combos. And there's a straight left hand for the highest level, or at a very high level. Infuriated, complained, told him to shut up. Got rougher. To Prescott. A good shot. Using that right jab. To come straight ahead as a puncher. Oh, Prescott. Gets it. As Prescott. Crawford has a real heart, I'll tell you that. Crawford giving as good as he Reminds me of a... Oh, there you go. That's the one. Terrence Crawford doesn't open up. Doesn't throw the hard shots. Terrence Crawford, Crawford has had a tremendous fight. Eight to one, Crawford. Prescott gives it, and he needs a knockout to win. Can somebody figure out something? Body's greatest, Prescott. Oh. Good luck. Buena suerte. Isotelo, or Keretaro, or Tepic. Oh, these are the next few rounds. It's really picking up tempo as they trade body shots, as Roy points out. And Crawford is trying to take the, the body here. He may find out a little bit about Sinatra. Oh, Caught with the right hand out of it. Oh, good uppercut. Key knockout. For a knockout tonight, but could have fooled me. Looks like he's got 51 of 219. This is a knockdown. And Lawrence Cole is going to stop the fight. Good stoppage. Sanabria couldn't stay steady on his feet. Touch him up. Come out of the belt. From odd angles and at moments when you don't expect it. Through Cameron Duncan that brought him to the opportunity to throw it. So that he'll fight him. You can't fight him a little bit. Good hook. Curious about the matchup. Going in, looking sensational again. Good left hook by Klimov, and Crawford accustomed to doing it. He can't muster the, the right kind of effort. His personality doesn't say that. In the fight of me yesterday, see that like everything we said, all he said was so. <laughs> Right. Oh, that body shot hurt, though. Oh. Oh. We have an agreement. Good luck and God bless you. Let's look at the range, Look, he's just done that with that right hand. That was clever. I just stopped him from the top of it. And getting through, and Burns is backed up for the first time in the fight. And then Burns shaken up and getting punched around the ropes here. Yeah, a nice fake with the eyes there. That was really clever, that from Crawford, and he's got him in trouble here. As they turn his hands up, he's back to the ropes. This is fighting to the body. Burns covering up, but it is it. But it's going to take an awful lot to put Ricky Burns out of this one. Never been. That's never happened before. But Crawford is going for it. Burns catches him with a left, but still digging in again, and then immediately Crawford comes. And once again, Burns being this one. Now he's been hesitant, he's been uncomfortable, he's had successes here and there. He's been the whole time, he's been the whole time. Good luck to you. That's it, boy. I really hope I'm there to see that. Crawford really making good adjustments in this round. It's going to make this fight really interesting. Crawford. Hard left hand by Crawford. Takes that. Oh, oh good, good, good shot. Hard counter oh. shot by Terrence Crawford. Down goes Gamboa. Tremendous right hand shot as Gamboa was coming in. 11 seconds to go in the round. Crawford enters it again with another right hand. Almost knocked him down. Left hand lands to Crawford. Gamboa on clear street as the round ends. Good quick right hook. Good hook, man. That hook Another again. right hook by Crawford. Seen in 20 years. Yep. He can switch and he's almost just as good right-handed, I mean left-handed, as he is right-handed. Here comes Gamboa shot. again. Oh, and there go the shot. And down goes Gamboa one more time. Another tremendous counter shot by Terrence Crawford. Not so much of the head shots as the body shot. Oh, this fight that went from exchange. Tremendous exchange. Gamboa almost went down again. 36 or 30 pound, that's not necessarily a 30 for that size wheel. Oh, Gamboa, good hook. Big left hook by Crawford. Uppercut by Crawford, you heard. Oh, oh hurt. Crawford, Crawford is hurt. Crawford's hurt now after a Gamboa shot. Crawford inside. And now Crawford's taking command again, and he hurts Gamboa. Oh, that was Gamboa. Thunder oh, is shot by both fighters. Tremendous left hand shot by Terrence Crawford. Front shots, bringing them up 
from the floor and Gamboa coming forward. Oh. Down goes Gamboa and that'll do it. Fourth knocked out of the fight and they knock out for Terrence Crawford. That was a great fight. A great fight. And a star-making performance of the highest order. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. Some of those guys, though, don't seem quite as effective from the opposite side. Somehow seems even longer from the south ball. <laughs> Here's as Manny Pacquiao's primary spot. Best shot of the fight for Beltran, and he did exactly what Max talked about. <laughs> oh, that's pretty boxing. Like this, to beat a guy like Crawford. Yeah, I have no respect for your power. And don't think Beltran can't do that. This Crawford is not going to Crawford's third win of the year if he can collect it, and all have been significant. Did becomes invisible to you because your, your eye becomes so accustomed to seeing it. It ain't over until it's over. Such a fighter. Yeah, he won't let you take the play away from him. Never. Hammering Beltran in the corner. And for the second round in a row, Crawford brings the crowd out of their seat. And something to get excited about and remember. We're taking up, risks. Take one more try for a big shot. And the closing bell as Crawford raises his gloves in celebration. Still undefeated. Still the WBO lightweight champion of the world, Terrence Bud Keith Thurman is a bit different than your average fighter. In fact, he's even different than your average world champion. And in Thurman's case, different is interesting. Thurman brings a thoughtful and cerebral, if not intellectual, mindset into the ring. When he's not training, he's likely to see Thurman reading a book. And for him, that intellectual approach to both life and boxing makes all the difference. Thurman came to Showtime four years ago. He had already bested a pair of former world titleists, Carlos Quintana and Jan Zavik and those wins had established him as a welterweight to watch. And while we were watching, he was thinking, and thinking big. In July 2013, Thurman faced Argentina's undefeated Diego Gabriel Chavez in San Antonio. At the time, Thurman was 20-0 with 18 KOs, and he did nothing to damage his reputation as a power puncher. For three rounds, Thurman and Chavez played the game of quien es mas macho, testing each other by trading big shots at every opportunity. As the fight progressed, Thurman shifted the brawl into more of a boxing match and edged ahead. In the ninth, the fight was still to be won when Thurman crippled Chavez with a hook to the body. Oh, body shot there by Thurman, and it drops Chavez to one knee. It was the first time Chavez had ever been down, and he never fully recovered. In the 10th, the end came emphatically, with a right hand downing Chavez once more. Thurman on the attack, swarming Chavez along the ropes, and Chavez is again down on the canvas. Perfect timing. And this fight is over. Keith Thurman stops Diego Chavez. The welterweight division was heating up, and Thurman was red hot. It seems an unwritten rule that every contending welterweight has to fight warhorse Jesus Soto Carras. But fighting Soto Carras and beating him have been two different things. Fighting Soto Carras was a risk, but a calculated risk. Thurman and Soto Carras clashed at the Alamo Dome in December 2013. And again, Thurman's mind was what mattered the most. The first round was fantastic, with Thurman hurt by a right hand. Oh, Soto Carras comes back, and you underestimate Soto Carras, and you do so at your own peril, as we are in the midst of a firefight early. And then Soto Carras is staggered by a crunching uppercut and some body shots. Soto Carras staggers backwards in the dying stages of round one. Thurman subsequently moved the fight to ring center, repeatedly drew Carras in, and punished him with counters. But it wasn't all one-way action. Soto Carras landed plenty of his own shots, and what was glaringly apparent was that while the use of a boxing brain is always beneficial, a reliable chin is a necessity. In the fifth, a left uppercut floored Soto Carras. And down goes Soto Carras! Wow! Sensing he had hurt his opponent, Thurman began to chip away, and in round nine, the weapon of choice was his left hook, with Thurman dropping and stopping his rugged rival. A left hand and Charlie steps in, the fight is over! Keith, one-time Thurman, remains unbeaten! 
Thurman was 25 years old, 22 and 0, and as promising a young fighter as anyone could name. Thurman began his 2014 campaign in April of that year when he took on a former world titleist in Julio Diaz at the StubHub Center in Carson, California, which figured to be a war turned into a disappointingly abbreviated battle. Oh, the left uppercut jacking the jaw of Diaz! The left hand to the top of the head convinced Diaz to take a knee in round two. And after the third, the veteran surrendered in his corner due to a rib injury. Diaz never fought again. Three fights on Showtime, Thurman had three KOs, but nobody KOs everybody. His next fight was a Las Vegas date with Italy-based Leonard Bundu. In the first round, Thurman, coming off an injury to his left shoulder, scored a knockdown. Oh, and Thurman already drops him with that left! Bundu was undefeated, but he was also 40 years old and clearly out of his depth. Thurman attacking the body. So it was not unreasonable to anticipate another early round blowout. But the clever Bundu fought to survive, and Thurman opted to finesse his way to a 12-round unanimous decision win, winning every round in the process. Better to be smart. In January 2015, Thurman was elevated from interim WBA welterweight titleist to full champion. His first defense came two months later, and it was a historically significant fight. The first presentation of premier boxing champions was Thurman versus former two-division titleist Robert the Ghost Guerrero. And the fight, which aired on NBC, marked the return of boxing to primetime network television. Thurman Guerrero was the first primetime fight on NBC in 30 years, and it was watched by more than 4 million viewers. It was a grueling fight. Although Thurman was getting the better of the exchanges, both fighters showed the effects. Thurman broke through in the ninth, flooring a bloody Guerrero. But in the immediate aftermath of the knockdown, Guerrero accelerated, especially in round 10, and over the course of the last three rounds, the action was both fierce and sustained. Thurman won a clear-cut unanimous decision, and what is best described as having been a one-sided, competitive fight. Four months later, Thurman faced another lefty and another former champ in Brooklyn's Luis Colazzo. The fight took place in Tampa, only 20 miles from Thurman's hometown of Clearwater. If Guerrero was physical and confrontational, Colazzo was slick and cunning. It was a surprise then that toward the end of round five, and with Thurman in control, Colazzo connected with a devastating left to the body. The effect was instantly apparent, with Thurman backing to the ropes in obvious pain. Colazzo with his best work. It looked like it hurt him in the body a little bit. A champion who wants to extend his reign is, at some point, going to have to prove he can overcome adversity. Thurman did just that, and in the sixth, he opened a nasty cut over Colazzo's right eye. The seventh was all Thurman, and after that round, Colazzo indicated that blood from the cut was hampering his vision. Okay, let me see. You want me to stop this? Since the cut had been opened by a punch, as opposed to a butt, Thurman was declared the winner by TKO. The fight had not gone smoothly, with the scare in the fifth round a potentially career-changing moment. But Thurman had survived and advanced. And that advancement took him to his biggest bout to date, a showdown with his third consecutive former world champion, Sean Porter. The title fight was televised by CBS, the first primetime boxing show on the network in almost 40 years. What an advertisement Thurman Porter turned out to be for big-time boxing. The welterweights tore into each other from the very start, and the momentum repeatedly shifted. Early on, viewers and ringsiders knew they were watching a candidate for fight of the year. Fireworks at the end of the third round! Porter is all energy, a short, pressure fighter who overwhelms you with his speed and athleticism. He and Thurman fought furiously and intelligently, but for me, the most impressive part of Thurman's performance was his understanding of what was going to be needed to win. Heavy exchange, oh, and Porter's knee buckled after that left. The frenetic pace forced Thurman, the thinking man's fighter, to rely on something other than strategy. 
He won a close but unanimous decision because of his drive, his cojones, and his will to win. That's a complete fighter.